Welcome to a screencast on ions and ionic compounds. The objectives of this screencast are to define ions, predict charges of ions of main group elements, state names and formulas for common polyatomic ions, identify ionic compounds, and determine formulas and names for ionic compounds. The elements in the periodic table are organized according to their properties. Elements in a given column or group have similar properties, and as an example, the alkali metals, elements in column or group one, lithium, sodium, potassium, etc., they all have similar chemical properties, how they react, they have uh, similar physical properties. The alkaline earth metals, column two, all have properties similar to other elements in that column, same for all of the other columns or groups. Now, the reason for these similar properties is that uh, atoms of elements in a given column have similar electronic structure. And more specifically, elements in a given column have the same number of what are called valence electrons as other elements in that column. Valence electrons are outer shell electrons. Chemical behavior is determined by electronic structure. This will be looked at in much more detail later on. Uh, for now, just needs to be noted that uh, the reason for the similar properties is similar electronic structure, specifically uh, outer shell or valence electrons. Now, atoms of some groups of elements can fairly easily gain or lose electrons, and when they do that, they form what are called ions. And ions are just that. They're atoms, or they could be groups of atoms, that have either gained or lost electrons and have an overall charge. And as an example, the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, etc., all can easily lose one electron, and therefore with one less negative charge, they have an overall positive charge, so they form positive one-charged ions. Alkaline earth uh, atoms can easily lose two electrons and form positive two charged ions. The halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, etc., relatively easily gain one electron and form a negative one charged ion. The oxygen column forms negative two charged ions. Nitrogen column relatively easily forms negative three charged ions. And then the farther uh, you move towards the middle of the periodic table, the less certain this becomes. But the aluminum column, group 13, can tend to form plus three charged ions, but it's a little less certain. And then the column 14, carbon column, might form minus four charged ions, might form plus four. Typically, they don't do either. Um, and then the transition metals all form positive charged ions, but there is a lot less rhyme or reason to that. Um, and that will be explored in a little more detail uh, down the road. Now, if we look at what's going on here, uh, we're going to start with the noble gases. And the noble gases are very unreactive. That's why they're called noble gases. And the reason they're very unreactive is they have very stable electron configurations. Um, so they don't change their electron configuration, but other, other elements do, and they readily form ions by gaining or losing electrons until they end up with a stable noble gas configuration. So the reason that the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, etc., gain one electron is because if they gain one electron, they have the same number of electrons as the noble gas that's to the right of it, and now they're stable. The oxygen column gains two electrons to achieve a noble gas arrangement. The alkali metals lose one electron to do this. The alkaline earth metals lose two electrons, etc. So we can predict, for main group elements at least, the charge of ion they form by their position in the periodic table, the group um, that they are in. Now, when this happens, the positive ions that are formed, uh, and we call positive ions cations, and the negative ions that are formed, and we call negative ions anions, they attract each other and they combine in ratios that give an overall neutral, what's called ionic compound. And this is an example showing on atomic level positive ions and negative ions in a big three-dimensional array attracting each other 
and a positive one and a negative one sort of neutralize each other in terms of charge and uh, that gives an overall neutral ionic compound. So let's look as an example at uh, sodium reacting with another element chlorine. So sodium is a metal, shiny uh, soft metal. Its electronic structure looks like this. It has one electron in its outer shell. Chlorine is a poisonous gas and its electronic structure looks like this. It has seven electrons in its outer shell. And if you mix together sodium and chlorine, they make the compound sodium chloride. And what ends up happening is you get a very vigorous reaction, gives off a lot of heat, it gives off some light. But if you let things cool down, you get this white powder, uh, this right white crystalline solid that you can sprinkle on your french fries. And what happens on an atomic level is a sodium atom loses one electron from its outer shell. That electron adds into the outer shell of the chlorine atom and this transfer of electrons gives us a positive sodium ion and a negative chloride ion and the two attract each other and make the compound sodium chloride. So we just did this one sodium with chlorine. Sodium makes a plus one ion. We can predict that from its position on the periodic table. Chlorine makes a negative one chloride ion. We can also predict that from its position on the periodic table. One of each neutralizes each other, so it makes the compound NaCl, or sodium chloride. Magnesium combines with fluorine to form. Well, magnesium makes a plus two ion. It's an alkaline earth metal. Fluorine is a halogen, makes a negative one ion. They attract each other, but a plus two and a minus one don't cancel each other or neutralize each other. But if there's a second minus one, then a minus one plus a minus one is minus two. A plus two is balanced by uh, minus two. And so we get the compound MgF2, two fluorines for every one magnesium. If we look at what happens when lithium combines with nitrogen, lithium forms a plus one ion. It's an alkaline, uh, alkaline metal. Nitrogen forms a negative three ion. And so it takes three positive one ions to balance one negative three ion. And so the compound formed is Li3N or lithium nitride. And as a general rule, ionic compounds are usually made by a metal reacting with a nonmetal. And note that we write the metal symbol first to the left, followed by the nonmetal symbol to the right. So that's our general ordering of things. Now, how do we name ionic compounds? Well, we write the metal first, the nonmetal is written second. The metal's name is unchanged, but the nonmetal's name is changed to an ending of IDE. So for a couple examples, if we combine calcium and bromine, calcium makes a plus two ion, bromine makes a minus one ion. We need two bromines, two, uh, two Br minus ions for every one calcium two plus ion. So the formula is CaBr2 and we call that calcium bromide. We change the bromine ending to IDE. Notice we don't have to specify the two because any chemist is gonna know what the formula will be once you've specified the name of the compound. Aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum makes a plus three ion. Oxygen makes a minus two ion. It takes uh, three minus twos to balance off two plus threes. So the formula is Al2O3. And then we would simply call that aluminum oxide. We again don't need to specify the two or the three. You can tell how many aluminums and oxygens would have to balance each other um, from the names of the elements and their position on the periodic table. Now, we can also have compounds that contain groups of atoms that have an overall charge. These are known as polyatomic ions. There are a lot of them. Uh, there's a number of common ones you're probably going to want to learn. I'll mention a few here. Ammonium ion is NH4 plus. 
one nitrogen, four hydrogens all bonded together, and an overall charge of plus one for the whole grouping of atoms. Hydroxide is OH minus, carbonate is CO3 two minus, phosphate is PO4 three minus, and there are other ones that you should get familiar with, uh, but these are some examples. We can use formulas or come up with formulas and names for compounds including polyatomic ions in exactly the same way. You just have to remember what the polyatomic ions are. So sodium carbonate, sodium's a plus one ion. Carbonate, you look it up or remember, it's a CO3 with a minus two charge. It takes two plus ones to balance off one negative two. So it's going to be Na2CO3 and we call it sodium carbonate. Magnesium nitrate, well, magnesium is Mg plus two. Nitrate, not one of the examples I gave previously, but it is the NO3 minus one ion. It takes two negative ones to balance a plus two. So the formula would be MgNO3 in parentheses two, because it's the whole grouping NO3 that we have two of. Ammonium chloride, ammonium is NH4 plus. Chloride is Cl minus. One of each balances nicely, NH4Cl. We write the positive ion on the left, the uh, negative ion on the right. Now, one other thing to consider for transition metals, you remember we noted that their charges aren't that predictable and different metals can have different possible charges like iron can be plus two or plus three. Chromium can be plus three or plus six and actually plenty of other things as well. So how do we deal with that uh, situation when we can have more than one possibility? And to do this, we indicate charge with a Roman numeral if we have a transition metal atom or ion. So iron two plus, we are going to write as iron Roman numeral in parentheses two ion. Iron three plus, we're gonna write as iron Roman numeral three ion. And so we simply have to add the Roman numeral to the metal's name in the uh, name of the compound. And in, if we have the formula, we can figure out what the charge of the ion would be from the formula. So a couple examples of this. How would we write the formula for copper two chloride? Well, copper Roman numeral two means it's a plus two charged ion. Chloride is a minus one charged ion. We need two minus ones to balance a plus two. So we would write the formula as CuCl2. Tin four oxide, well, tin is SN and it would have a plus four charge. Oxide is a minus two ion. So we need two minus twos to balance one plus four. So you might think we're gonna write two SN o, uh, or SN two O four, but with ionic compounds, we always reduce them to simplest ratios. So a ratio of two to four is the same as a ratio of one to two. So we would actually reduce this to SNO2. And let's do one for formula going to name. Fe3PO42, what's that called? Well, PO4 is a minus three ion, it's phosphate. If we have two of those, that's a total charge of minus six. So we need a total charge of plus six spread amongst, uh, among three iron atoms, or uh, sorry, iron ions. So each iron ion must therefore have a plus two charge and we would call that iron two and then phosphate. So the name of the compound is iron two phosphate. And that is it for ions and ionic compounds.